Hello, ma'am. What's your name? Anoa Changa. Anoa, are you from here in Georgia? I live here in Georgia currently, yes. Now, there was just, there was a huge protest against uh, Stacey Evans in the main ballroom at Netroots Nation 2017. As as it has happened in uh, Arizona, we had a whole lot of upset progressives in there because some women, I mean, because a whole lot of uh, black women with quite a few white allies and others decided to protest uh, this woman. Tell me your story. What is it that we're? What is it that's occurring that made this protest occur? I mean, what's occurring is what we've seen recently. Like I was just discussing earlier, what we've seen recently is this. Um, what folks will denounce as a litmus test in some instances when we're talking about you know issues of whether it's ab protecting abortion rights. We're willing. We're willing to be flexible on so much when we're, when we're trying to protect white progressive candidates and white progressive elected officials and get people on board and in, and in line. However, you know when it comes to some of the other like black elected officials that we're seeing there is a really high standard that's placed in them in terms of whether or not they're acting progressively or whatever. I'm not taking issue with whether or not we critique or criticize people's records. I absolutely believe in that. I think that's the foundation of what we consider our democracy right now. We need to be asking the real questions and people should be able to answer to those real questions. I was just asked earlier, you know, are we going to do something involving Stacey Abrams? I think Stacey Abrams, you know, if she is pushed by the community or asked questions or presented, you know, with the opportunity to express herself, she will do so. Um, with with Stacey Evans, she has been given a pass. What happened today was the fact that you know Stacey Evans was given time at the most largest progressive gathering in the country um, to speak, and there is a complicated issue in terms of her stance on education. So while she would like to chant hope, 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 referring to the Hope Scholarship Program for college here in Georgia, um, you can't get to college if you don't have adequate protections in terms of pre-K and K-12. And her support for school privatization, for, for for vouchers, for, I mean, just other other issues. Um, you know, these are things that people slam Cory Booker on on a regular basis. Cory Booker was not asked to be on that stage today um, with the NEA. So, I mean, and, and, if, and if he had, we would be doing the same thing. It's about the issue itself. So if we're going to make this about education, as many people have started doing already, they keep saying this is the education issue about hope. I mean, no, we need to be honest because education is more than just free college. Free college is something that, while it can be beneficial, if you don't have the adequate preparation, I mean college preparation, college preparedness is a serious issue when you're talking about black brown children, we're talking about poor children generally. And when we're talking about the rural communities that Stacey Evans, you know, claims to be from and a part of and, you know, wanting to support, um, these are communities that also would be hard hit by these types of policies. You know, it does not it is not in the best interest of children, it's in the best interest of the private entities that come into play to take the public funds away. Do we have a problem with the way our public education system is? Yes, we absolutely do and we do need to pursue alternatives, and I hope both candidates will listen to community leaders, to teachers, to parents, you know, in improving the education system should one of them become governor. However, this is not about, you know, wanting to do something political to undermine, you know, her chances or anything. This is about being real. Like, she's being posited as this great champion of education because of one thing only, the HOPE scholarship. And yes, that is important. I'm a mother of an 11th grader. It's very, very important to me here in Georgia. Hopefully my kid stays in state, so it'll benefit at her, but at the same time, there's all these other issues in terms of the way our K through 12 system, you know, and the way our pre-K, you know, issues with funding. I mean, there's all types of stuff. So, so it's a complicated issue that needs more nuance than it has been getting thus far, and that's what we were talking about. I mean, trust black women. You know, people need to listen. People need to listen. Like I said earlier, we are the backbone. Not, I'm not. I do not consider myself a Democrat. I vote Democrat, but I do. I am not a Democrat. But we are the backbones of democracy. Whether we're talking about third party formation whether we're talking about you know different organizational work whether we're talking about the Democratic Party itself like we are the reason why you know shit moves excuse my language I'm so sorry that's fine it's, 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 a, it's a very emotional moment but um, but yeah so that, I mean that's what it's about and it's not about you know you need to vote or support someone or you need to stand with me solely because I'm a black woman but you know I'm on the right side of this and you need to just trust my judgment no. and, and, and walk in formation okay I, I want to end with a very important question mm -hmm. because I think you touch on something that is a very a larger issue than just yes. the Abrams. Uh, what's the first? The, uh, Abrams and Evans. And Evans, the, a, a much deeper issue, and that 
is the pass that many are given within the progressive movement mm -hmm. if they are not a candidate of color. Mm -hmm. well, I think it is yes, very no, important no, that absolutely. that comes out because some of the reactions we also got in the room was distinctive disgusting. of yeah. the same thing we yeah. saw with the Black Lives Matter uh, change that occurred mm -hmm. in Arizona. What's interesting right. is that what the Black Lives Matter event in Arizona did was immediately change the platform the, or, or the stump speech and platform that Bernie Sanders was running on, which says these things, as disruptive as they are, work. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for those who were, like, been out of shape or this is not how we do things, I had a former state representative who also was the Georgia lead on the Bernie campaign just comment on another live stream that this is not how we do things. I, this is not how we do things. We don't, we also don't, you know, if I, if, if I, people. No, go ahead. If I may add, yeah. this is not the way things are done yeah. if they are done right. In other words, Absolutely. if people have Absolutely. no other avenue, Absolutely. this is what occurs. A woman in there asked me, she said, if we're looking for democracy, shouldn't this woman get the opportunity to speak? The reality is, yes, but again, there it's was not... The not exactly. It's a problem, right? If right. we're supposed to be a gathering of progressives, I mean, they messed up with having someone else who's not necessarily progressive on the stage Friday night as well. I mean, this is also in response, and I, I appreciate the response of Netroots ultimately to agree that this is what democracy looks like. They're recognizing and adapting and understanding, and hopefully we'll have further conversations going forward. But at the same time, to your question about what happens to candidates of color, and even though there's been a lot of commentary, particularly around Kamala Harris recently, that I don't necessarily agree with, one point that stood out very well was something that Zerlina Maxwell wrote. Uh, she wrote that, you know, this is what these are their loops, their jumps, there's hoops that, that black uh, uh, electeds, as well, particularly black women, have to go through to get support. That's something that we need to change, right? We should be able to be strong on the issues. We should be able to be the best possible person for the community in addition to the fact that we're strong black women. Right, like so, 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 so there is a bias towards us in these spaces. I mean, call it whiteness, call it white supremacy. I know folks are like freaking out about what happened in Charlottesville, but that's America. This is America. We struggle with it within inside of you know the progressive movement, the the, the, the Democratic Party, third party spaces as well. There is no 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 sudden like oh my God, we're progressive, so we don't have these issues as well. I mean, when we look at what is happening and the way you know black candidates do not get the same level of support unless they have a huge movement of their own people behind them as we've seen with um, you know Chokwe Lumumba down in Jackson, Mississippi mm -hmm. as we've seen out in Richmond, California as we've seen in you know Seattle with Nikita Oliver like it takes us as a community to stand, stand by and get like you know our issues front and center we can't keep playing their game we saw what happened to Keith Ellison in the NC chair race we've seen what happened to Donna Edwards in her race we saw I mean we've seen this you know Dwight Bullard down in Florida like we've seen how they will pile on when they don't want you uh, strong strong black person of intelligence and integrity to be in a particular position. So that happens, that's real, and we need to deal with it. The last thing, that's what it, that's what happens when we have invisibility. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Noah Shanga.